Welcome to Weather and Climate Chat with our regular hosts, myself, Monsoon Mike, and Dr. Michael Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome back to the program as always. And with us this week, we have two guests, two students of Dr. Davis's weather analysis class. First guest, introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Margaret. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good. All right. Pleasure to have you here. Well, um, I know some of our prior guests from the weather analysis class were specifically working on a project or research. Uh, you're kind of here. You just want to observe and you know add some input. So we'll let's just you know go with the flow and see where the conversation takes us. And you can feel free to jump in any any time, any way you want. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And introduce our second guest. Hello. Who are you? Thanks for having me, guys. My name is Liz. I'm in Dr. Davis's weather analysis class. Um, I'm actually working on a research project with Dr. Davis on flood frequency distributions in the Northeast. Welcome. We're, we're uh, very excited to have you here. All right. So, Dr. Davis, um, you know me. I generally love weather that's crisp, refreshing, chilly, and I've complained for many years that a lot of our Octobers and Novembers have been uh, you know, too warm around here, but I've been kind of pleased so far with this fall. Uh, it hasn't really been that bad other than that one spell of heat that we had early in October where we broke that one crazy record of 93 on October 2nd, I think it was. Since yeah, now we're like 23. <laughs> and, and now we're the total opposite of that. 93 would have been about a good 20 to 30 degrees above normal. Now we're averaging about 20 degrees uh, below normal. <laughs> so we've gone from one extreme to the other. Um, why has it been so unusually cold, Dr. Davis? So we had a, that nice uh, kind of warmish day on Monday. Yeah. And then the cold front came through. Mm-hmm. And behind that cold front, we had a pretty strong Canadian high that came in and pretty much set up shop across West Virginia. And that's what's been giving us kind of a dry, cold day as winds are coming out of the north. And if you have those clear skies at night, we run into a lot of radiational cooling, which then causes us to be cold overnight. Right. And there were some record lows that were set or tied uh, just on Wednesday night? Mm -hmm. Or was it it Tuesday night? Tuesday or Wednesday night, yeah. Yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday night, and then we had another round of record-breaking cold temperatures uh, the other night. (laughs) And I believe that I heard a uh, statistic. Uh, Again, I'm not sure what day exactly it was. It was one of those cold days, Tuesday or Wednesday, where Allentown, Pennsylvania had their lowest high for that particular day. Um I think it was only like 35 degrees, which is more like a average temperature that we would expect, uh, what, in early to mid-January. Yeah, yeah. We're, we should be about 50, 52, I was going to say, somewhere, yeah, there. somewhere around there. So that's a good 15 degrees uh, below average. Um, and, and generally, I've, I've been looking at the long-range uh, long range forecast, and I don't really see... Uh, a whole lot of warming. It looks like uh, we'd go through some cycles where it tries to warm up for a couple days. And if we uh, backtrack for a second, we did have some snow flurry activity too. We did. We had some snow flurry activity. Actually, it was um, today. Yeah, I'm mixing up my days. Today's Thursday. It was Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning uh, when that cold front swung through. Uh, That that was a weird morning because I remember waking up at around 4 o'clock in the morning, looking at my thermometer on the nightstand, and it was 45 degrees, and waking up four hours later to get up for the day, and it was 31 degrees. Mm-hmm. So that was a pretty notable cold front that had come through in those four hours. Yeah, I didn't get much snow of any by me. Yeah, but, uh, I, I Margaret, actually... Margaret, you're got, you're got neck of the woods got yeah. some Yeah, snow, I live above Scranton, and we got a decent amount of snow, about two inches, two or three inches, coming this week. And then uh, back home in Cleveland... They had some lake effect snow of course. Uh, just the other day, and there was an 83-car pileup on the uh, I saw the that. Lake. I saw that. <laughs> Always happens. Always happens every time Yeah, people forget how to drive. Yeah, lake effect snow can be a little terrifying if you're in it because it could be whiteout conditions, and all of a sudden it clears out, and then, boom, you're back to... Well, like effect snowfall is sort of like what we call in this area when we get them snow squalls, where yeah, you know exactly. it, all, it can be you know sunny in Kutztown and, you know snowing to beat the band in Topton, and then a couple t- minutes later, the reverse of that, snowing in Kutztown, sunny over there. Yeah, it's... Uh, and occasionally we do get the lake effect. Here. Yeah, you yeah. You can stretch that uh, You can see some of those bands sometimes coming as far south and east as our area. I have seen that sometimes. 
Um, so yeah, so we had yeah, I, I saw some uh, some snowflakes on Tuesday morning. In fact, I did drive through one. I guess you would call it snow shower near Hamburg, uh, where the roads almost were trying to get dusted up, but then it's just that fast stopped. So I probably saw more snow than you did, Doctor Davis. <laughs> yeah, I kind of had more rain. Yeah, maybe like a very brief rain snow mix, but right. that was about it in the Lehigh right. Valley. But you. I uh, saw so a lot more snow. Yeah, definitely a lot more and a lot colder, too. <laughs> a lot colder, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, altitude. Right. <laughs> now, now looking at the, the pattern for the coming days, um, kind of a, I want to say, boring pattern. It looks like we try to warm up a little bit only to uh, cool back down over the weekend uh, with a, uh, and then the weekend generally looks fairly uh, benign as well. Um Temperature-wise, over the weekend, uh, we're looking at highs maybe around uh, upper 30s, low 40s on Saturday, a cold night Sunday night, highs upper 30s, low 40s on Sunday, so not a whole lot of lot of change there. Monday, it looks like model tries to cook up some sort of coastal low of some sort, which, if we're going to go that far out, may throw some precipitation back our way on Monday, but it doesn't look major in and any way. I would also have to wonder where exactly that cold front stops, because if it stalls out after it passes through our area, mm-hmm. that likely set up the track for the low pressure when it comes up the East Coast. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but but generally the, the long and short of it is is not looking to be a major concern in our area. Maybe some precipitation on monday of some sort but nothing major beyond that not a whole lot of i mean yeah it looks like we could get some rain snow showers mid next week but i'm not seeing any major organized storms in the next week or so yeah that could just be scattered noise that doesn't really hold itself together looking at the um Looking at the National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center website, which we always like to do, six to ten day forecast. Probably still below. Still below normal. Eight to fourteen day. Still below normal. Uh, mm-hmm. Precipitation uh, above normal, and normal. So, uh, and the one month outlook still looking about equal chances of below or above. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we're going to take this verbatim, uh, next fourteen days that puts us to around Thanksgiving. So it looks like uh, we're generally going to stay on the cool side. And who knows? This could be one of our first uh, months in quite a while that, in this particular area, uh, it's actually a little on the cooler side. Are you still calling for the generally warmer winter? Uh, Three month outlook is uh, yeah, still they still have. Uh, slightly above normal outlook but that outlook was made on october 17th i think they only update those every so often so um who knows they might i just checked the north atlantic oscillation and it's pretty neutral right now okay so that would imply not really anything too extreme one way or the other strong blocking in place because if you get more of a negative north atlantic oscillation then those coastal lows can linger for a while okay potentially giving us more uh, snowfall or rainfall depending on the environment that gets set up so generally a pretty average to slightly below average pattern for the foreseeable future. Now that shouldn't sway us by any uh, getting on our little soapbox here. That shouldn't sway us in any way, shape, or form into saying, uh, oh, it's cold outside, so you know everything is, is, is great, because I believe we just had our warmest October on record Earthwise. Is that true, Dr. Yes. Davis? Warmest uh, October on record, the warmest September on record, the second warmest August on record. The warmest July on record and the warmest June on record. Right. So just like that little meme that I see online, just because uh, your end of the ship rose, you know, 500 feet doesn't mean the ship is still not sinking. So we still have to, you know, be careful of, of you know, the general pattern, even though it's kind of chilly where we are in our little Or using little. a snowball to discredit climate science. Or right, right. Um so there you go. That's that's basically our uh, our rundown for this uh, this particular week. Any any more words you want to get in there to our guest? No. Nope. No. Are you a fan of snow? Do you like this kind of weather, I like mean, I do, or not? Yes, I love the snow. You do. I okay. just don't like the cold weather. Okay. I'm more of a snow person. I like my snowmobiles and stuff. So that's also fun for me. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So you want more of the snow than the I rain, do. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would take this kind of weather over a hot summer day any time. You know, people think I'm crazy for saying that, but I would. Um, Do we uh, want to hint at what could be coming for Thanksgiving? We could try. 
You want to yep. go for it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you, you mean weather-wise or? Yeah, just like what the models are showing. Yeah, at the moment, I mean, we can go. I can go way but out. But of course, you and I both will put yeah. stock into I'm it. I'm surprised you even would, would suggest this, Dr. Davis, because usually <laughs> you and I you would say, like, ah, that's. So, yeah, so Thanksgiving is the 28th. If we were to look at the GFS, which is the model that likes going out far. Do, do we uh, want to say that the potential cold weather sticks It looks like the cold weather. One thing I always like to look at is the two-meter temperature anomaly where it, it pretty much uh, gives you, you know, blues if it's below average or reds if it's above average. And if we're out here now, we're, of course, we're in the dark blues, uh, and we keep going and going and going. A little bit of warmth trying to come in there on the Friday the 22nd, but then cold, cold, kind of cold, still cold. <laughs> so generally it looks like for the rest I'm of the... I'm thinking it's probably going to be cold. So it looks like a cold, average, not going not gonna to try to forecast precipitation that no. far out, but it's temperatures. We can generally get a good, pretty good idea. I think Thanksgiving will be cold or yeah. colder than maybe some past Thanksgivings when it's been warm. So we'll see if that lasts. So now let's reintroduce our other guest as well, Liz, who's doing some interesting research. Tell us about it, Liz. So I started this research project during my junior year. I'm a senior this Mm -hmm. year. So um, Dr. Davis approached me with this idea about um, trends in the national climate assessment are showing an increase in annual precipitation over the last 30 years or so. Mm -hmm. So... What I've done so far is I've analyzed the precipitation records since 1975 to the present, and I found that on average it's mostly increasing every year. And I also looked at flood frequency or flash flood warnings that were issued in all of the climate divisions in the Northeast over the last 30 years or so, and I found that each decade there's more and more in terms of flooding and I'm also looking at the PDSI to see if that has anything to do if the soil moisture has anything to do with um, the flood frequency distributions and I presented at um, the the American Association of Geographers uh, conference in Washington DC in April and I didn't present this year at Middle States, but I do plan to present next year at Middle States in Hofstra. But, yeah. So I think you might have said this, and I'm sorry I could have uh, uh, spaced out and missed it for a second. The, the area that you're studying for uh, the precipitation is in this particular area? Like yeah, the, the northeast Atlantic region the northeast? of the okay. United States. Very good. All right. And and the, according to the U.S. Uh, National Climate Assessment, the northeast region is the one that's going to be experiencing the biggest upswing in uh, precipitation over the next coming decades. And why is that? Uh, mainly because of storm track patterns and just warmer air can hold more moisture. So you're dealing with us, unfortunately, being under a lot of potential storms leading to heavier rainfall tolls. And we've seen some of that not too far from our area. Ellicott City, mm-hmm. up toward uh, Schuylkill County. Yeah, uh, yeah only about ago. 45 minutes north of here, not far from where I live. I think, uh, what's that one town? Tower City, I think, had that one freak storm last year. Where and they, they had, had a week later another big yeah, one, too. Yeah, they had like a foot of rain and then a week later like another six inches. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're already seeing the products of that a little bit happening now. We sure are. Yeah. Um, does that concern you? I mean, are you, are you looking deeper into the causes uh, of of why that might be happening? Is it climate change related, or I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I think that global warming um, puts more energy in the atmosphere, and like Dr. Davis said, there's a greater um, capacity for moisture in the atmosphere. So I think it's more likely to rain more. Like heavy rainfall days will be more um, frequent as the global temperatures keep rising. Uh, How does the um, Palmer Drought Severity Index, the soil moisture, fit into it? Um, That is something that I'm still working on um, analyzing because I'm not quite sure at this point. But That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're still working on it. That's yeah. what research is all about. You still, it's still a work in mm-hmm. progress, right? Um, so w- when you're looking at the uh, precipitation, you know, in this particular area, oftentimes what happens in one part of the world or the country, it's kind of like the total opposite in another part of the country. I don't know how expansive your research is, but are you seeing anything with, you know, the increased rainfall in our area, maybe meaning more droughts out west, or or are you looking at that at all? Um, 
Not so much, but I do know that the Northeast region is the region that's um, experiencing the most significant increase in yeah. precipitation, and mm. all of the other regions are seeing a decrease for mm. the most part. So, yeah. Yeah, we really haven't looked at any uh, teleconnections yet. Okay. So That'll we don't later. really know what that might entail, but the data in the U.S. National Climate Assessment are depicting a more drier west. Now, you've said you've been, they've been kind of looking back at records or trends since 1975. Have you seen, generally, you're seeing a slow upward, but have you seen, like, maybe in the past five or ten years, that curve kind of even shooting up higher, like, more more apparent in the past few years, or, or about a steady thing for, since 1975? I, I would say that it's been mostly steady. Okay. But one thing that I'm thinking about taking um, a different approach on with this whole topic is looking at how land cover has changed over the last several decades. That's true, too, yeah. Because, obviously, developed surfaces like macadam, mm-hmm. sidewalks, all that. And when you talk about the Northeast U.S., that's a very populated, populated region area, of right. the United States, so you have a lot of urbanization and right. impervious surfaces within the Northeast region. That's a good point, because I was actually born in 1976, and I can remember, like, growing up in the 80s, you know, some of these areas around here were all rural and now in a lot of those same areas it's macadam it's you know pavement and, and uh, that's got to somehow play into this as well too yeah you should do more of a remote sensing analysis right, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it's definitely some very interesting research that you're working on and we're going to be interested to follow it as as you you know progress through the coming you know months and before we head out today, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, you know something that's going to be happening uh, that we've been hearing a lot about the climate strike. So the climate strike is going to be occurring at the Kutztown campus at I believe on the subfield. It starts at ten thirty Friday. Okay. And as in this coming th- this coming Friday, Friday the twenty second. Okay. And anyone that is interested in attending, if they're concerned about the climate, is more than welcome to do so. Okay. And just voice your concern about how climate change is occurring that's real and that you have very little action being taken right now by uh, those in power to curtail or ensure our posterity. Right. That's that's definitely concerning. And I, I've been following these climate strike stories, and it's really... Uh empowering that so many young people are, 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 do, are participating. Yeah, in. that's the big thing is that we have all this momentum with mm-hmm. the uh, younger generation mm-hmm. and it's really invigorating to see as they're very concerned about their future and their climate that they're going to inherit from us. Right. Great point. All right, so that's uh, this coming Friday the 22nd. That's correct. Any, uh, do you want to th- any thoughts on that, Liz? I highly encourage all of my classmates and all the students here at Cutstown to at least just walk participate through, yeah yep. and just see what everyone has to say because it should definitely be a concern of everyone's because if we don't have a planet what good is your education right what good is really and uh, what, what I good always is say, anything what yeah. good yeah well, I always say we argue about other issues in politics all the time but what, what good is any of that if we don't have a planet to live on to argue those issues <laughs> exactly yeah so if we don't have our environment our home in order and ensuring the sustainability of that, then everything else is moot. Yeah, moot. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that, and I want to thank you so much, Dr. Davis, for being a part of the show, as you always are, and to both of our wonderful guests today. I hope it was a positive experience for you. We'll join you again next week here on Weather and Climate Chat. Have a great day.